Hello guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder. In this video, I'm going to try to get the timer part of our app working. The first step would be to go to the main activity here and construct the handler that we talked about in the previous video. I'm going to simply say handler, handler over here. Immediately, it gives me an error and I'm going to go here, click on it and just press option return on the Mac or alt enter on Windows. And it's going to have this pop up where it says import class. When I click on the pop-up import class, there are two handler classes out there. The one we are interested in is android.os.handler. So I'm going to select that and we are done. Now inside the onCreate method, I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to construct that handler by saying handler equals to new handler. In other words, create an object of that handler so that we can use it, right? So I'm going to do that and you see there are certain options here. We are going to take the constructor which has no parameters and I'm going to put my semicolon over here. The next step would be to define our task. If you remember, our task is contained inside a run method. The run method is a part of the runnable interface. To do that, there are several ways. We can have a class that extends the runnable interface. Like for example, I could go down inside the onCreate and I can say class my runnable. And here I will say implements runnable. Now remember runnable is not a class, it's an interface which means you don't extend it, you implement it. And then I'm going to go again to resolve this error that says it must be abstract blah blah blah. The runnable interface has the single method run which you must define when you're trying to implement it. So just press option return or alt enter and then say implement methods. When you do that, you notice that it has the single method run here where I can click OK. And there's my class my runnable implements runnable now inside this whatever i write will be considered to be a part of the task now i'm not going to use this method however i will use the other one where i can use an anonymous object for example i can go here in the on create and i can say runnable runnable is new runnable now remember i'm not creating an object i'm simply creating an anonymous object that is going to be implemented right here inside this place here and put a semicolon at the end now inside the run method all i want to do right now is to display a toast i'm going to say toast in fact display a log so i'm going to say log dot d here put the tag as vips for myself and then i'll simply say run was called over here so now i'll simply try to run our task by going down the next statement and say handler dot post delayed now this method is going to take two things the task that you want to run that would be runnable the amount of time after which you want to run that would be one second which translates to thousand milliseconds once i do this let's take a look at what happens when i run the app i'm going to just hit run at the top here and i'm going to keep my eyes open on the log cat at the same time go here to the log cat where there's this option saying edit filter configuration here i have my log tag as vivs in other words i want to see all those log statements with the tag vibs which i have used in my code if you remember click ok here and once you do that you should be able to see your log statement when the app runs now it's asking me which device i want to run it on it's going to be the samsung galaxy s5 emulator which is currently running here it's locked let me unlock it and there's the app running and you notice it calls run but it's called only once now let's see what happens when we try to reschedule the job the way we do that is go inside the task and we again schedule it by saying handler dot post delayed here we need a reference to our runnable which we can directly obtain by saying this here and we need the delay which would be thousand in other words run this task again after a thousand milliseconds now notice the way i have returned this this is the kick start in other words initially this statement is going to be run here and then it's going to jump to this runnable and it's going to jump to the run method and then it's going to execute this log statement and then it's going to go back to this statement where it says handle or post delete this and thousand is going to come back to the run run the code come back here come back up and so on so let's run this and find out how this works if you go and click run at the top so there's our app running and notice the log cat here on the left hand side you see every one second the run method keeps getting called take a look at that and this is going to happen infinitely because you have not specified when this should stop that's the problem which is why we need a variable that stores the amount of time for which we want to run this. And every time this runs, we need to keep reducing that by saying 49, 48, 47 and so on. Otherwise, this is going to go infinitely and you will have to terminate this by going to the settings part in your app. So let's go back. Let's go to our settings section here. And in that, I'm going to go to the apps part here where my speechly 
out here and I'm just gonna select that and say uninstall oops this is the other version of speechly app which I currently have I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna say for stop click OK and there you see it has stopped it only stops when you explicitly terminate it so instead of running this infinitely let's make it definite by adding a variable at the top called time remaining I'm gonna go here and say private long time remaining and here I'm gonna say 5000 in other words we just have 5000 milliseconds for which we want to run all I'm doing right now is trying to test and show you guys how this actually works so go to the part here inside our task and here I'm gonna just reduce the amount of time that I have I'm gonna say time remaining equals to time remaining minus thousand or I could say minus equals thousand whatever works for you so just do that and then I'm gonna have an if condition where I say if the time remaining is more than zero then only reschedule this otherwise do not reschedule it to do that all I have to do is wrap this part inside our braces here so you see time remaining is more than zero the post delayed will be called once again otherwise it won't be called now let's take a look at what happens when we run this so let's go back click run at the top so now when you run this you notice that run was called three times four times five times and that's it it's not being called anymore which means our concept of a timer is working perfectly all we have to do is take input from the user which is going to be in minutes and seconds convert that total amount into milliseconds and we want to run our handler for that many milliseconds as long as the time remaining is not zero so this would be the basic concept of the speechly app also, also one more thing to do is to play that notification or beep sound when the time is exactly 30 but don't worry about it we will cover as we go further right now in our app nothing happens when you click this toggle button let's try to get this fancy button to work shall we the way we do that is to bring this control that is our toggle button from XML to Java if you remember and if you notice the toggle button has this Android ID which is slash at the rate plus ID slash toggle button now if we can pull or refer to this ID from Java code we would be linking both these together so let's go back to main activity and try to do that at the top inside my main activity I'm gonna go here and make a variable type toggle button I'll call it toggle button here and I'll simply call that as toggle button now the naming conventions of Android actually suggest that you should start with a small m and then you should follow a camel case but for now I will change the case later as we go further in the series so going to the toggle button here inside the on create method i'm going to initialize that toggle button somewhere before our handler is created so i'm going to go here and i'm going to say m or toggle button here equals to find view by id we need to find this from xml right so i'm going to supply the id that we just saw out there which was toggle underscore button or toggle button if i remember and then we need to typecast this because this returns a general view object but what we want on the left hand side is a toggle button object as you can see it is in compatible types here so i'm just just going to press option return or alt enter and then i'm going to say cast to the toggle button out there once i do that i can add a listener to be notified when this button is checked or unchecked in other words I can go at the top in our main activity here and I can say implements on check change listener every time the toggle button is going to be selected or unselected or whatever you call it this listener needs to be implemented so that we are notified about it at this point it's going to give me an error saying that you have implemented an interface but you have not defined its method so I'm gonna just press option return or alt enter again and I'm gonna see this implement methods option here select that and it's going to show me the method which would be on checked change so I'm gonna just select that click OK at the bottom and when I go back you notice that I have the method on checked change right here at the bottom now all we need to do is tell our toggle button that hey whenever you're clicked you know who you're gonna be telling this about you're gonna tell this to our activity the way you do that is by saying toggle button dot set on checked change listener and you pass this over here in other words who is the person handling the clicks of the toggle button it's our main activity and where is it going to be handled it's going to be handled inside the on check change method as you notice there are two parameters here the first parameter is the toggle button that was checked or unchecked the second parameter indicates whether the status is true or false true means it is on false means it is off now in our case we have just only one single toggle button on the screen so we don't care about the first parameter rather let's try to see what happens with the second parameter I'm gonna have an if else condition here just to show you guys how this works I'm gonna say if 
and I'm gonna say is checked then do something otherwise do something else and what I'm gonna do inside these conditions is to make a toast here by saying toast dot make text again pass the context as this the message as on and the length of the toast should be short it shouldn't be long and then I want to show the toast most importantly and I'm gonna just copy this statement go to the else part paste it here and I'm gonna simply replace the on with an off in other words whenever the toggle button is checked we are going to get this on pop up on the screen and whenever the toggle button is not checked we are going to get this off pop up button on the screen so let's go back run the app and try to see if this actually works or not click run here and our app starts once again you will notice that at the bottom in the log cat we will have the five second timer running because it's configured by default so coming here there is on you notice it says the button is on you click off it is off on off you can do this any number of times and the toast messages are gonna come one after the other so this means our toggle button is also working so in this video I have covered two ideas one is how to use the handler as a timer and two how the toggle button works in the next video it's time to dig further into code and teach you guys how to take input from the user and do the remaining things that our app is supposed to do in the meantime stay tuned with design coder all the videos covering the design, the Android part, and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.